For more on the war in Ukraine, CBS News national security correspondent David Martin joins us now from the Pentagon. Hi, David. Thanks for joining us. You know, Hi. we're nearly yeah. two weeks into this conflict, and the Pentagon initially predicted that things would be over much quicker for the Ukrainians. They said that the Russian military might be able to take Kyiv in just a few days. So what has the weaknesses of the Russian military told the world about the Russian capability? Well, that it's uh, not all it's cracked up to be, and I'll bet you that uh, Vladimir Putin is finding this out for the first time as well. Uh, that was actually not an American prediction that Kyiv would fall in two days and the rest of the country in two weeks. That was the battle plan that the Russian military sold to Putin and that the U.S. somehow got hold of. But they have proved very inept at land warfare. There have been cases in which uh, entire columns of tanks have simply run out of gas. And we've seen those satellite photos of that resupply convoy uh, strung out along a road for 40 miles with uh, unable to go forward, unable to go backward. But it's more than just resupply. The Russians are not very good, it turns out, at coordinating their air and ground operations. So instead of concentrating all your firepower at the point of attack, they are just attacking in piecemeal, and the uh, Ukrainians are able to beat them back. And finally, the Russians appear uh, not willing to take risks. When they see an opening, or at least what looks like an opening to U.S. officials, they just don't go for it. They sit there and hunker down and uh, wait for reinforcements, and uh, the result is that they just are in this grinding warfare. But after saying all that, I have to point out that a senior defense official said today that Russia still retains 95 percent of its combat power. So this may be a stalled force, but it's not a spent force. With that in mind, David, so the New York Times reported that the U.S. and NATO allies supplied Ukraine with 17,000 anti-tank weapons. What are you hearing about that and what kind of difference they might be making on the battlefield? Well, there are a bunch of different tank weapons involved here. Uh, and the, uh, the high-end one is called uh, the Javelin. It's made uh, in the United States. And it is able to destroy a tank. The, uh, the operator simply gets the tank in its sight at 2,000 yards, fires the missile, and then he can duck for cover, and the missile does the rest. And what it does is it pops up to about 150 feet, and then it dives down on the top of the tank, which is where uh, it has the least armor. Now, there are lots of other anti-tank weapons out there. Uh, they can't destroy a tank, but they can disable it by, say, uh, knocking off a tread. And when the uh, Russian tank crew uh, comes out to uh, try and find out what the problem is, then they expose themselves to uh, gunfire by the uh, Ukrainians. David, there's a lot of confusion today around this Polish plan to supply the Ukrainians with fighter jets. What's the latest? And are we talking about enough jets to really change the dynamic in the skies above Ukraine? Well, the latest is it sounds like uh, the, the Poles have uh, pulled a, a fast one on the U.S. They announced, uh, without uh, apparently telling the U.S. they were going to do it, that they were willing to transfer all of their MiGs, uh, MiG-29s, to a U.S. Air Force base in Ramstein, Germany. And the plan, apparently, would be for uh, Ukrainian pilots then uh, go to Germany to this U.S. base, pick up the uh, MiGs, and fly them uh, back into Ukraine. You know, that comes awfully close to uh, military intervention uh, uh, by the U.S. And it's, it's a tough decision to make. I mean, Ukraine obviously uh, could use the MiGs. Uh, the, its pilots know how to, how to fly MiG-29s. And control of the airspace over Ukraine will be critical to determining the outcome of the battle on the ground. But uh, flying 
uh, MiG-29 straight from a uh, U.S. base in Germany into Ukraine, uh, you don't know what kind of response that would provoke uh, from Vladimir Putin, and it might end up doing uh, the one thing uh, President Biden is determined not to do, which is letting uh, the U.S. get uh, dragged into this war. So this is, this is a very uh, tough decision. And just very quickly, David, why would the Poles do that? If they're going to supply the jets to the Ukrainian military, why not just tell them to come pick up the jets in Poland? Because they don't want to expose themselves to a possible attack uh, from, uh, from Russia. If they, if they provided the, uh, the planes directly, then they could be accused of having intervened in, uh, in the war in Ukraine. So uh, it, it, uh, this plan would essentially use uh, the uh, Americans as uh, middlemen uh, to uh, bear the onus of the decision. All right, David Martin at the Pentagon for us. David, as always, we thank you for your insight and reporting. Sure thing.